Hi, I am Ajin Leo, your English tutor. Today we are going to study noun. Noun is a part of speech, most of you knew it well. But today I am going to explain not only its definition, but also its types with examples very clearly. So don't skip this video, watch it completely, thus you will get a clear idea about noun. Let's begin the journey on this great topic. Now, what is noun? Nouns are naming words that are used to name people, such as Roly, Shally, Man, Woman, Girl, The President, and places Mumbai, India, Italy, Brazil, Classroom, Basketball Court, Animals, Tiger, Deer, Ideas, Invention, Evolution, Discussion, Conclusion, Argument, Destruction, Things. Ball, car, bedsheet, stone, bag, laptop, desk. So nouns are the naming words that are used to name people, places, animals, ideas and things. And how do we find out noun in a sentence? In a sentence, nouns can play the role of subject, object, complement, appositive or modifier. A complete sentence usually consists of at least a subject and a verb. In most cases, the subject is a noun or a pronoun. Example, birds fly, pizza is delicious. Here, birds and pizza is the noun which play the role of a subject. So, most basic role for a noun is to act as a subject for a verb that follows it. Nouns and pronouns can also play a role of object. Examples Please give Jeremy some bread. I have brought a girl's a gift. So bread a gift is the object in a sentence. And nouns are often preceded by an article A and B. He was really a genius guy. So a genius guy is the noun. An elephant is such a huge animal. An elephant is the noun. The United States is a big country. The United States is a noun. So some nouns often preceded by the article A and D. Now let's see its types. Basically noun has eight types. First one, proper noun. A proper noun may also be referred to as a proper name. It's a noun that serves as the name for a specific place, person or thing. Example, India, China, Mina, etc. These are unique names. When we hear these names, we could remember the particular person and countries. Although a proper noun is a name of a particular person or place, that name may be given to more than one individual. More than one man is named as James. But when we say James, we think of a one particular person whom we are calling by his own name. Other examples are, has Anand done his homework? Here the noun Anand is a particular person, so it's a proper noun. I have never been to Egypt. The noun Egypt, remember the particular place, so it's proper noun. Second one, collective noun. A name or noun used to denote a group of people, things or a group of animals is called collective noun. Example, team, committee, squad, family, fleet, flock. See some more examples. The British army was defeated in World War II. So here army is the collective noun because it do not refer one person, it refer a group of persons. Likewise, the second example, the football team was congratulated by the principal. So here, the team is the collective noun. 3. Common noun. While proper nouns are naming words that refer to the specific people, common nouns refer to common terms that are used to name common people, common places, common animals, Birds, insects, uh, uh, reptiles, ideas, objects, and so on. Example: boy, 
girl, man, woman, lawyer, engineer. When we say man, we are not calling any single person by name. We are using a noun which applies in common to all the members of a large class of person. See this example. The boy helped his grandmother to cross the road. Here the sentence clearly indicates the boy, the common noun boy. It do not indicate which boy helped his grandmother. So boy is the common noun. I did not go to school yesterday as I was sick. So here school. The sentence do not refer a particular school. So it commonly says I did not go to school. So school is the common noun. A common name given to every person, place, things or activity belonging to the same kind is known as common noun. Fourth one, material noun. The noun that gives the sense of a liquid or substance, that which is measured or weighted but not counted from the various things are made is called as a material noun. Another word says material nouns are the names of your substances from which things are made. Example, gold, aluminium, iron, plastic, cement. See some more examples. Uh, she bought gold jeweler. Here gold is the material noun. It is a substance. We can measure it. We can weight it. But we cannot count it. Fifth one, concrete noun. The names used for materials are things which have physical existence or that materials are tangible in nature are known as concrete nouns. Something or someone that can be perceived with the five senses touch, hearing, sight, smell and taste. So these are the concrete nouns. Table, televisions, laptop, mobile phones. So these nouns can be counted. See this example. There are many new mobile phones launched last month. There are many new mobile phones launched last month. So mobile phones is the concrete now because it has the physical existence. Now you have a doubt over the concrete and material now. The difference is concrete nouns are the nouns which can be felt through our five senses. But material nouns are the nouns which are uncountable. Example, silver, gold, sand, wood, water. So water we cannot count. No? So those are the material nouns. Concrete nouns has the physical existence and which can be counted. Sixth one, abstract noun. The names which are used for an idea Quality, concept or condition are known as abstract nouns. Abstract nouns are not a physical substances. They don't have physical existence. Example, friendship, love, freedom, excellence, patient. So friendship which do not have the physical existence. It's a feel, it's a quality. The example, the freedom struggle of India is known to the world. So freedom is the abstract noun. Many abstract nouns are derived from adjectives. Example, greenness from green, freedom from free, wisdom from wise, bravery from brave. So many abstract nouns are derived from adjectives only. Seventh one, countable noun. It's so easy. Countable nouns refer to the things that can be counted as individual units that can occur in a noun phrase with a numeral are indefinite article. Example, one man, two books, four students, etc. Five students in our school qualify for national games. Well, five students. Students can be counted. Common nouns and concrete nouns can be countable nouns. Eighth one, uncountable nouns. Uncountable nouns refers to the things that cannot be counted as individual units, such as water. Water winner, we cannot count it. We cannot say it, there are one water, there are two water, there are three water. So water, rice, knowledge, these are the uncountable nouns. These nouns usually do not have a plural form and cannot be used with the numbers or indefinite articles like A, R, M. But they can be used with some quantifier like some, any, much. 
there are some money in his wallet the lawyer gives advice to his client so advice is the uncountable noun these nouns are also called mass nouns all abstract nouns are uncountable nouns but not all uncountable nouns are abstract abstract nouns like so hopes and dreams are countable but at the same time abstract nouns like happiness despair imagination are not countable so there are basically there are eight types but in unwords grammar there are some more types generic nouns a generic noun is a noun that is used to refer a whole class of things they can be plural or singular and they may appear with a definite article or indefinite article or no article so generic nouns are nouns that are refer to something in general or as a whole for example if you say i love basketball games it refers to all basketball games so this is a generic noun now you have a doubt over generic noun and collective noun a collective noun names a class or group nouns like committee or group are a collective nouns but a generic noun represent a typical member of a group usually the things described as collective noun functions as a unit but therefore treated as a singular noun next one a positive noun an appositive noun is a noun that comes after another noun to provide additional information about it if the appositive provides essential information it is written without any extra punctuation if it provides extra information that is not essential it is surrounded by commas examples my colleague adam has really a bad breath so my colleague is the appositive noun see the next sentence my car a ford focus broke down yesterday actual sentence is my car broke down yesterday so there are some additional information a ford focus which is not at all essential so it's surrounded by commas so a ford focus is the appositive noun moreover appositive nouns provides essential infor- extra information about the noun attributive noun attributive nouns are the nouns that are used to like adjectives to modify another noun for example company is the attributive noun in the phrase company policy even though attributive nouns work similarly to adjectives there are still classed as nouns this is because they don't fulfill all the grammatical requirements of adjective for example they have to appear before the noun it wouldn't make sense to say a policy that is common okay but if it is an adjective means for example the flower is beautiful beautiful is the adjective of the noun flower so we can say like that a flower that is beautiful it makes sense but here attributive nouns it do not fulfill all the grammatical requirements of adjectives for example company policy so we cannot say a policy that is company it do not make sense so see some more examples we obtained the permit from a government official so a government is the attribute now our son expelled from nursery school so nursery is the attribute now gerunds A gerund is a noun that is identical to the present participle of a verb, the ing form. There are typically nouns that describe the same activity as a verb, but they were formed from such as driving, formed from the present participle of drive. So moreover, gerund is a noun form of a verb that ends in ing. See this example, then you may understand. When I am on vacation, sunbathing and reading are my favorite activities sunbathing and reading are the gerunds playing tennis takes a lot of physical and mental skills playing is a gerund next one possessive nouns a possessive noun is the noun that followed by an apostrophe and the letter s to indicate possession example my father's house father apostrophe s it indicate a possessiveness 
the house is belongs to the father to indicate possession with a plural noun that end in s just add the apostrophe after the s and don't add any extra s example my parents house parents is the plural form already the world has s so after the word we have to put a comma see this example this place are smaller than my parents house but much bigger than my sister's apartment so here parents is the plural one so after the word there is a apostrophe which indicate the possessive noun and the second and second word sister is the singular noun so apostrophe s yes, is needed to indicate the possessive next one cases in noun case is the grammatical function of a noun or pronoun a noun is classified on the basis of cases which are given below these cases tells us the exact position of a noun in a sentence what are the cases are there for noun there are total of five cases of noun in english language first one objective case when the noun and the sentence in the direct object of the preposition or the verb then the noun is the objective case example the doctor is taking care of his clients his clients is the direct object so that is objective case second one non native case in the sentence if the noun is the subject of a verb then that is a nominative case umesh is a bright and intelligent student umesh is a subject also a noun it is in nominative case possessive case uh, just before we have studied now possessive case when a noun in a sentence denote possession or ownership then it is a possessive case you are sitting in manish chair manish apostrophe s it indicate the position the chair is belongs to manish the possessive case is often called the genitive the possessive case of most noun has the singular number that ending apostrophe s and plural noun that ending in s take no further ending for the possession example elizabeth hates the officer's name so those are the singular noun so after that apostrophe s to indicate the possessive and officer's name artist pension so officers is the plural noun so after the word there is a apostrophe to indicate the possessive plural noun that do not ending in s and take apostrophe s in possessive for, for example policemen that is the plural but it do not ending in s so we have to add apostrophe s to indicate the possessive children's car fourth one native case when a noun in a sentence is in the indirect object of a verb then the noun in the sentence is in the dative case we gave our dog a bone our dog is the indirect object there should not be a preposition before the indirect object because in that case it will be the object of that preposition fifth one vocative case when a noun in a sentence is used to get attention then the noun in a sentence is in the vocative place example ajay are you coming for a function so ajay is the vocative case because it get attention when we read that this data we get attention of the noun ajay then gender so in a noun there are four genders first one masculine gender a noun that denotes a male animal is said to be of the masculine gender example man boy tiger son these are the male so that is a masculine gender female gender a noun that denotes a female animal is said to be the female gender example woman girl nature lioness then common gender a noun that denotes either male or female is said to be of the common gender for example parent okay child so both genders are coming at here parent male or fan female child like a student cousin so these are the common gender then neuter gender a noun that denotes a thing without life 
neither male or female is said to be of the neutral gender example book pen room so we cannot say it is the male book it is a female book so it is the neuter gender then numbers noun numbers a noun can be categorized based on their number it has two number that is singular and plural number when a noun denotes one person or thing it is in singular number boy man table so it denotes one person and one thing so it is a singular number and when a noun denotes more than one person or things that is called a plural number boys it uh, refers a group of persons men tables so these are the plural number there are certain rules to change a singular to plural to change a regular nouns to plural form the suffix s yes is added to the verb for example girls are the plural form of girl we just add s yes after the l then it become plural if singular noun ends in s e s s e s h c h the suffix s yes is added to the end of a verb to make it plural pulses are the plural form of pulse so the word end with s e we have to change as es to make it plural if a singular noun ends with f or f e the f is often changed to v e before adding the s to make it plural wolves is the plural form of the word wolf so f is replaced by v e and if a singular noun ends in y the letter before the y is the consonant okay, remember the letter before the y is a consonant then the suffix ies is added to make it a plural form example cities is in the plural form of city because before the letter y there is a consonant so we have to replace the y by ies to add it make it a plural form if a singular noun ends in y and the letter before the y is a vowel form then the suffix s is added to make it a plural form race is the plural form of the word ray okay because before the letter y there is a vowel so we just add s at the end of a word then we can make it a plural if the singular noun ends in o the suffix es is added to make it plural example potatoes is the plural form of potato potato end with the o so we just add es to make it a plural so i hope all you have understood today we have studied a detailed form of noun don't forget to subscribe and follow my channel